Hey guys, today we are going to review the different methods of factoring that we have learned. So let's get started with greatest common factor. Remember, you always want to check for this. This should be your first step in every factoring problem. So remember, we find the GCF and then we will divide each term by the GCF and put the remaining factors inside of the parentheses. So let's start by finding the GCF here. 28 and 56, 28 goes into 56. So the first part of my GCF, the coefficient is 28. And then they both have an X and the lowest exponent is that X. And then they both have a Y, so the lowest exponent is Y. So my GCF is 28XY, so now I'm going to divide each term by 28XY. And my factored form will be the GCF 28XY times 28X squared Y divided by 28XY. 28 divided by 28 would simplify out, so would the Y divided by Y, so I'm just left with X for the first term. And then the second term, 56 divided by 28 is two. X divided by X simplifies out, and then Y squared divided by Y is Y. And remember, you can always check your answer by distributing. So there is greatest common factor. That is what you should always check for first in any factoring problem. Then grouping, we want to use this whenever we have four terms in the polynomial. So this one has four terms, that means that we should factor. So then we are going to split the polynomials into pairs, we'll group them, find the GCF of each pair, and then factor out the common binomial. So let's go ahead and do that, let's split this into pairs. The GCF of this first group would be 2x, and then I am left with 6x squared divided by 2x is 3x, and 4x divided by 2x is 2. So there is the common binomial that I'm looking for both groups, 3x minus 2, which is also what this factor already is. So I'm going to pull out a fake greatest common factor of 1, since I don't really want to change that 3x minus 2, because now I have common binomials of 3x minus 2, so I can factor them out. So the factored form is 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2. And you can always check that by distributing with FOIL or using the box method. Okay, now let's get into our trinomials. So a trinomial is when we have three terms. You can use this basic method when the leading coefficient is 1. You just figure out what adds to b and multiplies to c, and then you use that to write your factors. So we just figure out what multiplies to C and adds to B. And then we use that for our factors. We can skip that grouping step when we just have this X squared and there's no other leading coefficient. So that's what I have here. So I need to figure out what multiplies to 24 and adds to negative 14. So 24 and negative 14, I believe that would be negative 12 and negative 2. So there are the numbers for my factors. Since this is basic, I can just jump to the factors of x minus 12 times x minus 2. Okay, now we're going to still look at trinomials, but this is when a is greater than 1. It's not basic. We have three terms, but I don't just have an x squared there, I have a coefficient in front. So you still find out what adds to b, but you have to figure out what multiplies to a times c. And then we use these numbers not to write our factors, but to rewrite the bx term. We split that bx term, and then we will have four factors and can factor by grouping. So the x is a little bit different here because I figure out what multiplies to a, c, and adds to b. So let's go ahead and do that on this problem. I don't see a GCF, so I can jump into factoring. So I'm going to figure out what multiplies to 4 times negative 15, which is negative 60, and adds to 17. And I believe that would be a combination of 20 and 3, so it would be positive 20 and negative 3. So now these are not what I'm going to use for my factors. This is what I'm going to split that 17x up into. I'm going to split it up into 20x and negative 3x. 
So I'll have 4x squared plus 20x minus 3x minus 15. And now I have four factors so I can factor by grouping. The GCF of 4x squared plus 20x is 4x. And 4x squared divided by 4x is x. And 20x divided by 4 is 5. Okay, so I need this other binomial over here to be an x plus 5. Both of them be positive, but both of the terms are negative right now. So I'm going to need to make sure I pull out a negative GCF. And that'll be a negative 3 that I pull from both of them. So negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x. And negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5. And now I have my common binomials that I can factor out. So my factored form is 4x minus 3 times x plus 5. Okay, difference of two squares is one of our special patterns. So if we only have two terms, then check for this. Check for your GCF first. Um, but check that they're being subtracted and they're both perfect squares. And then if they are, you factor them into your two binomials with the square roots and you make one a plus and one a minus. So let's check that here. I have a difference and those both look like they're perfect squares. So I can use this pattern. The square root of 25x squared is 5x and the square root of 64 is 8. So this factors into 5x plus 8 times 5x minus 8. Okay, then last one, perfect square trinomials. You can use this special pattern for perfect square trinomials. You can also use above trinomial methods. So if you like this pattern, go for it. If you do not like this pattern, then just draw your X like you did up here and use one of these methods. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and go over this one. Remember your first and last term are perfect squares. And then the middle term is twice the product of the square root of the first and the second term. And then you end up with this nice binomial squared. So. Let's make sure that this one is a perfect square trinomial, and then if it is, we can factor it into that binomial squared. So this would be a perfect squared, x squared, which it is, that square root is x. This would be a perfect squared, 121 is 11. Okay, so the first and the last are perfect squares. So let's check and see if this middle term is two times the first square root times the second square root. Two times x is two x times 11 is 22 x, so it is. So I can factor it into that binomial squared. It's gonna be a plus, since it was a plus here. And the first square root was x and the second square root was 11.